In humanity's struggle for survival against the alien onslaught, there stood one creature in particular that was so alien and different from the rest that even the Covenant had a tough time communicating with them. This creature was incorporated into the Covenant via a peace agreement as not to be drawn into a lengthy war with heavy casualties on both sides. They have been bugging humanity since Halo 2. It is, of course, the Yanmei. And that was not an easy name to pronounce, so because of that, we will call them what every other human marine calls them drones. So without further introduction, let's jump into the lore and morphology of the drones, buggers, or Yanmei. Also, drop down in the comments if you think we will see these guys in Halo Infinite or not, because I would say maybe, you know, stranger things have happened. So let's kick this off with some stats on this giant bug. Oddly enough, they are about human size, though compared to the Master Chief, they seem much smaller. Their average height is going to be between 5 foot 10 inches to 6 foot 9 inches, or 100 177.8 to 205.8 centimeters. Arguably, the latter half of the stat is really going to be an outlier rather than the norm, much like how we have humans who are 7 feet or 213 centimeters tall, but we would not say that's a normal range. The weight of these creatures is going to be very human sized as well. They will weigh usually between a range of 170 to 240 pounds or 77 kilograms to 108.9 kilograms. So, all in all, these creatures are going to be about the same size as your average marine, but have some very distinct combat advantages. Before jumping into that though, let's take a trip down memory lane and discuss their evolution on their homeworld. First and foremost, their homeworld is named Palamok. Surprisingly, it is much like that of Earth, but entirely hostile to human life in a few ways. But these hostilities explain the evolution of the drones pretty nicely actually. The planet itself has more than twice the gravity of Earth, about 2.2 times actually to be exact. One of the main reasons why the planet is going to be hostile to humans. If you were to walk on this planet with twice the gravity, your heart would more than likely not be able to pump against the weight for long, leading to you pretty much blacking out due to blood loss to your brain. But the drones seem to do just fine, even thriving in this world. The atmosphere is surprisingly going to be less thick than that of Earth's, which you would think with a larger planet, a denser atmosphere, but not so much. It currently sits at 0.9 atmospheres. Somewhere along the planet's history, a type of insect began to evolve that was actually going to be a tree dweller and flightless, believe it or not. Even though it has wings, evolutionarily, there is a reason that these wings do exist, albeit they're not going to be a flying insect, but we will cover that in a moment. The trees house these bugs, and over time, they became more intelligent. So intelligent, in fact, that when discovered by the Forerunners, they were named one of the actually few sapient insectoid creatures. However, it should be noted that they are, in fact, not true insects, as they do not share common ancestry with Terran life. Nonetheless, they are quite intelligent. Their morphological traits were born from necessity and living on a high gravity world. While the atmosphere is thinner than that of Earth's and the gravity higher, their wings were able to provide lift in short bursts. Living in the trees, one could see how this trait would be invaluable as one missed branch could be a death sentence. Upon falling, they could activate their wings, slowing their descent to a manageable smash into the ground that may injure them but not outright kill them like it would for humans who hypothetically could fall out of these trees. There is another barrier of protection concerning the drone morphology, and that is going to be its thick carapace. The hard exoskeleton could absorb the impact of falls and hits during territorial disputes with other drones, but ironically this heavy carapace also holds them back from true flight, making it quite impossible for them to maneuver in sustained flight on their home world. The exoskeleton differentiates itself from the exoskeletons of the insects on Earth by sporting five segments rather than the standard three, and considering the these are extraterrestrial insects, this is unsurprising as they had a different evolutionary path. These segments are going to be the head, cephalothorax, thorax, pelvis, and abdomen. On the head sits feathery sensory antennae and compound eyes as well as a set of mandibles. What separates these creatures from most other insects is that the hands sport fingers and opposable thumbs. This is stranger than you might think on insects as they typically will just have pads and that's about it. On the pelvis sits a pair of two legs used for locomotions, and a second set of legs connects the abdomen, allowing the drone to actually sleep upside when it can and also hold onto walls and be able to fire at, I don't know, marines maybe. The intelligence of a drone is actually quite pronounced if you didn't know, albeit it is not exactly the same type of intelligence that humanity has. Humans pride themselves on being individuals, whereas the Yanmae are called eusocial species. Basically, this means that they are going to be more adept at working with one another rather than being geared 
towards individuality. So almost a hive mind, but a less sinister one than you might think, sort of like the necromorphs. As the species has evolved to be a hive mind, it doesn't incorporate other species forcibly into a hive mind. It should be noted that mental disorders exist within the population, however, that makes individuals think for themselves and unable to work in conjugation with others in the group. Pretty freaking ironic, because that's actually, uh, we tell humans to think for themselves. Anyways, this is going to have two effects. The first is that the creature is going to be smarter than your average drone, as it has not suppressed this intelligence to be with the group. The second effect is that it's going to be more violent. Perhaps it's a coping mechanism for vulnerability, but the creature is considered more dangerous. Anyhow, the hive mind mentality has also done something strange to the drones. They are incapable of feeling fear and higher emotions. Emotion appears in individuals as perhaps a way to protect the individual, however in the hive minds this is not necessarily ever going to be formed because there is no point in protecting the individual, there is a point in protecting the hive. So time for some side lore. The Yanmei A actually do feel one emotion apparently, jealousy. They end up killing an engineer named Lighter Than Some when he was promoted to a technician role, which the drones apparently take very seriously, which is also another example of their intelligence. Drones are highly successful engineers, in fact their species was native tier 4, meaning that they were already achieving spaceflight when the Covenant found them. Which brings us into their adoption into the Covenant. It is stated that when they were found, the drones put up a pretty good fight. The Covenant also couldn't just outright glass the planet either as they believed Forerunner structures existed there. Engagement after engagement, the Covenant lost more troops than they did kill drones. Eventually a peace agreement was drawn up when they finally figured out how to communicate with the insectoid race. Upon further discovery, they found that no artifacts actually existed on the planet, but luckily for the Yan Mei A, this was only found after the war had concluded. They were then adopted into the Covenant and became machinists. They would fix the broken machines as they seemed to have a natural knack for it. In fact, when a human interrogation was done on a drone for information, the drone was able to figure out how to reconfigure the translator within minutes to get it to speak English so that they could communicate. After their adoption, the drones gained new abilities. First, they became adopted tier 2 on the technology scale, so they were basically completely interstellar faring at this point. The Covenant began to notice that on worlds that didn't have high gravity and thin atmosphere, the drones were able to maneuver in flight but could not sustain the flight. Gravity dampeners were then attached to their carapace, giving the drones true flight, which is how they navigate on Earth so easily. Without the dampeners, they would not be able to sustain this flight and would more than likely fight on the ground, albeit they could jump around and attach to walls much better than humans could. The flight is more than enough for drones, even to the point that they are able to pick up humans. Certain drones have been seen completely lifting fully armored marines off the ground, carrying them off to more than likely drop them from some high place. This shows that the strength of drones is going to be much higher than what is typically given credit. The drones have an interesting hierarchy concerning their placement in the Covenant. You would kind of expect that they are the cannon fodder, but that's actually going to be far from the case. They appear to be above the Ungoy and Kigyar, but still below the Jirolhane and Sanghili. They are typically going to, unsurprisingly, be used for aerial attacks. This method has wiped out many groups of marines. The drones will fly up and begin their attack on the humans below. While the humans are shooting up, focusing on the threat from above, the ground units will move in and then begin taking out the infantrymen. So now we come to what I like to do sometimes, and only in this late hour do I realize that Luke the Notable has beat me to this long ago. Oh well, I guess all YouTube is nothing but reused ideas, right? What would happen if you found a single drone without any weapons and you yourself were out of ammo? Well, things aren't really looking too hot for you, my dude. A Yanma A is going to sport a few natural defenses and a few offensive capabilities that you just aren't going to have in your human form. First and foremost, the carapace of these things is quite thick and quite hard, providing armor for the creature that's going to be strong enough to actually even stop some bullets. Next, its ability to fly means it can quickly leave a situation if you get the upper hand or even if you jump on it. It is going to be able to take off, pulling you off the ground. Last, its speed is going to vastly outmatch the reaction time of a human and the ability of a human to keep up. You're basically looking pretty screwed concerning defensive measures. Concerning offensive capabilities, the drone is going to sport claws on its feet and hands. These are going to be able to rend flesh cutting deep enough to slice arteries and veins of the person. Think about a jackal, but it can actually take a punch. That's going to be a drone. If this thing jumps on you and knocks you down, it is going to straight up game end you. Yes, I too watch Pyrocynical. Your best bet in 
in hand-to-hand -hand combat, ironically, is going to get it in an enclosed space. Run for any cover you can that has a roof and then force it to land. Let's be real, your fists are going to do very little against that hard exoskeleton, and I bet you would probably just break your hands. Your best bet would be to find anything that's going to be able to crack the carapace. In life or death scenario, when adrenaline is released, regular humans have actually been known to beat bears to death with pieces of firewood, so surely you could use a piece of rubble to begin hitting this thing as hard as possible. Channel that caveman strength because you're going to need it. Last resort, you would probably use a piece of your armor, a piece of rebar, a knife, anything remotely sharp to pierce the carapace of the cephalothorax or the head region. This would be a kill shot. Just be aware that the claws will be going for your non-exoskeleton the entire time. Odds are, hand to hand, a normal human would not survive combat with a drone. But if you are able to find a weapon to swing with, you stand a better chance. Swing away, Meryl. Alright, so that about does it for the Yanmei A. I hope you guys enjoyed the video discussing the evolution and morphology of this creature, as well as a look into its background. If you did like it, then liking is of course a great way to get the video infecting others recommended tab. And if you are new here and enjoyed the video and want to keep up with the channel, subscribing and tagging that notification bell usually works. I say usually because it's YouTube and they don't always notify and I really need to quit taking these pot shots at YouTube, but I am still very salty. Anyhow, I will drop my Discord, Twitter, and Patreon links in the description. If any of that interests you, then excellent. I would of course like to thank my current patrons. At the scientist tier, we have the three holding it down, Layla Elizarin, and then there's Master BC, and next up is A. Lorantis. The resident tier, we have Richard Muhlenberg, Alex Parks, and Miscellaneous Militaria. Our geneticists are going to be Andrew Lawson, Divine Whisper, and John Russo. Holding it down with their Masters in Biology, we have Adam Hartswick, Brian H. Briggs, Cameron Smith, Javier D. Rodriguez, Laffy No Skill, Scott Grant, and The Otterman. And last but not least, with their Bachelors in Morphological Sciences, we have Ahigao Comics, Alex the Gun Guy, Average Soul, Captain Gas Mask, Dustin Ellis, Eric Scott Gillies, Natsuki Chiaki, and One Tired Sloth. Thanks for the patronage, guys. If you've made it this far, and I'm just gonna go ahead and reiterate that my live streams are in a playlist. They are unlisted on the videos tab, so that's why you can't see them, but they should be visible in that playlist. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see y'all in the next one.